Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our videos. Today I'm going to be showing you and doing a quick review of this Altel MaxiLink ML529 OBD2 code scanner. The reason I got this is to replace uh, some of the other code scanners that I have because I would like to transfer those into my vehicles to keep on hand in the actual vehicle and trunk of the glove box in order to diagnose issues on the road if any such issues arise. The reason that I want to do that for some of my vehicles is because they're modified and they tend to break more than your standard car. So in order to accommodate that and kind of help me out on the side of the road if and when something were to happen, I'd like to keep code scanners in some of those vehicles. So this is going to be the one that I keep in my toolbox or in my cabinet uh, at home and that I use, at least hopefully, on a regular basis in order to diagnose issues that aren't vehicle-specific specialty issues that require a uh, manufacturer vehicle-specific scan tool. I have, for example, a Mercedes scan tool that is to diagnose low-level issues on Mercedes. This is going to be something that's higher level and universal across all vehicles. And the great thing about this is that it is from Altel, which is a nice brand name. Um, it supports live data streams, your uh, freeze frame data. It supports printing data out via a PC. So it has a uh, ability to connect to a PC and print out data if you want to save it as a paper copy. And it's also able to be updated via uh, the internet. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and open this box up, take a look at what's inside, and I'll show you how we're going to connect it to the car and run through some of its functions. Okay, so I have the package opened up now, and this is what comes with the scan tool. Obviously, you get the scan tool itself. You get a carrying case, which is very nice to see included. That doesn't come with all scan tools, even within this price range. Um, it comes with a USB cable, which is what's going to let you transfer data over to your PC to either print it out or to update the scan tool itself. You get your OBD2 to DB connector cable. This is what plugs into the top of the unit and adapts it to your OBD2 port. And in addition to that, you get a quick reference guide, which is really nice to see, and a user's manual, which is written in very understandable English, which is not something that you always see with scan tools that are from companies based in China. They don't always necessarily have the best translations in their user's manuals. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take this over to my Nissan, which is a vehicle that I'm going to be keeping a scan tool in from now on, and one that's been known to throw a specific code. And I'm going to check it to see if it's had if it has that code pending in the ECU right now. I believe I fixed the issue, so it shouldn't have that code pop up. But what better time to check than with a brand new scan tool? So with that, I'm going to put everything together, connect the cable up to the scan tool itself, and bring it over to the car and show you how it works. All right, so here you can see we have the MaxiLink unit powered on, plugged into the vehicle. You can hear the water pump for the supercharger of this particular vehicle whining away in the background. That's because the key is on. So <clears throat> right off the bat, as soon as I powered on this unit, I just started scrolling around, testing out features. And one thing that I really, really like immediately is the responsive user interface. A lot of other tools that I use, you press a button and then a second later it moves over in the menu. This one, it's instantaneous. So as soon as you click a button, you're scrolling around to the user interface. So first thing I wanna show you is just your general readiness test. This is what a lot of people do to check to make sure their vehicle is ready to go through emissions. You click on test. It's going to wait for the vehicle to respond. It's going to communicate with the vehicle. And then the cool thing about this unit is that once it tests it, it will give you a light. This one has a green check mark. That means that we're good. We're ready to go through emissions. We should pass no problem. So from there, what you can do is a few other different things. You can do your typical diagnostic trouble code lookup. You see this in a lot of uh, higher priced OB2 readers that aren't full featured systems like MaxiSys or Snap-on Solus or anything like that, that will let you manually plug in a OB2 trouble code and it will look it up through its little built-in database. So for example, this vehicle has had in the past P0101 codes on a uh, somewhat regular basis due to the supercharger system and some vacuum leaks. So if I plug in P0101, which is a mass airflow sensor code, it will bring up Master volume airflow A circuit range performance. So that is telling me that that code means that the expected value of the mass airflow sensor is either changing too quickly or it's out of the range of the expected value. So from there, there's a couple other options that you have. You have about, which tells you about the code reader itself. Setup, which lets you change the settings of the code reader unit. And then playback, which lets you playback saved data from previous scans 
as well as I believe freeze frame data. So now we're going to go into the OBD2 diagnostics option. This is where you check your vehicle's trouble codes. Now we know we don't have any because I already checked the readiness for emissions testing, but we're going to go through and just kind of show you the features anyway. So I really like the fact that it lights up with a check mark to tell you that there are no issues. It gave me gave me that uh, information on the screen as well. And right here it's asking me if I want to erase previously stored data to save data from this test. So if you're testing a vehicle that has a check engine light on, it's going to prompt you immediately if you want to save it or not. So if you want to save the data for future reference to look back at to, if you forget what the trouble code was, it's going to be saved on the unit. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit yes. And then from there, you have all of your options to read codes, which there are none on this vehicle. Erase codes, again, there's none on the vehicle, so no issue. Live data, which is really nice. Now this is going to communicate with the ECU and give you live readouts for things like mass airflow through the actual mass airflow sensor, throttle position, accelerator pedal position, all sorts of different other things as well. So this is something that's really nice to see in live view. If you're diagnosing an issue and you think that you suspect a sensor or something to be bad, but you want to check to make sure that it's feedback to the ECU is what you're expecting it to be, which is not what's proper. So for example, if you think you have an O2 sensor that's bad, you can check through this menu to see if the O2 sensor is reporting proper data to the ECU. And that will tell you that the, either the O2 sensor is bad or there's something in between the O2 sensor and the ECU, i.e. a wiring harness, that has failed or has gone wrong. So that's what live data is for. Freeze frame data is whenever a vehicle throws a check engine light trouble code, you are going to have freeze frame data on most modern newer vehicles that is saved at the time that it throws that trouble code, a little bit before as well as a little bit after. So you can go back after the fact take a look at that data and see through all of your readouts from the ECU what might have triggered that issue. Um, your readiness, again that's the, your emissions readiness test, onboard monitor test, component test, you can view your vehicle info, so your VIN number and that sort of thing, as well as take a look at what modules are present in the vehicle. That's going to be your different ECUs. In this case of this vehicle, it only has accessibility using this scan tool to the engine control unit itself. So that's all it shows for this. So overall, this doesn't offer you many more features than some other competing units that have the same advertised feature set. But what it does give you is a lot nicer of a user interface, one that's really, really responsive, and one that's quite intuitive with things like this little light here that tells you with a nice green yes, maybe, or no what the status of your vehicle is and whether or not it has an issue or is ready to go through emissions testing. In addition to that, it seems to be built quite well. It's nice and lightweight, but at the same time, it's surrounded with, with rubber. It's got a nice cable, nice thick uh, DB connector, as well as the cable that goes up to the OBD2 plug. And overall, I think this is going to be something that'll last me quite a while in my toolbox for the purposes that I use it for. I think it would be a great thing to have for a shop uh, if you just want a, an inexpensive tool to lend around the shop to have your technicians diagnose issues on vehicles as they come in. Also a great thing to have at home. If you don't already have an OBD2 scanner, this would be a great one to look into. And in addition to that, anybody who's a car enthusiast and wants to keep one in their vehicle, this may actually be a good option for that as well. This is gonna be one of the higher quality ones that I have, other than the vehicle specific ones. So I'm gonna keep this one at home safe in the toolbox, but it would also be a great option for that too. So with that, I wanna thank you all for watching. Be sure to check out a comparison video because I may make a comparison video between this and some of my other scan tools. And I'll see you in the next one.